Good morning, folks. We're going to keep up with space weather since we had a couple solar flares bounce back from the lighter day we saw before. We'll look at some larger seismic events and get some Nova science too, which helps to reinforce the concepts of catastrophism that our sun does Nova. We are starting as always with our star and we find the last day was mostly quiet in terms of coronal motions and plasma ejections. Despite having a couple M-class solar flares, there wasn't a lot of activity produced in the corona. The GOES X-ray flux shows that here, two spikes on the right, those were the M-class events, both in the lower range of the class and they did not produce coronal mass ejections. We'll watch those here, both off the southern incoming group, that is the largest of the sunspots facing Earth, it's the flashes of light, which are the flares, confined flaring events. To see that they did not produce CMEs, let's go to 304 angstroms and you can see here that despite the fury of most of the sunspots, they are contained within their magnetic fields and local areas. No CMEs of note the last day. Peeking quickly at the sunspots, we can see the large one on the south responsible for the flaring. We've still got groups peppering the earth facing half of the sun at the moment, and a new one popping up on the north behind the others, still on the incoming phase of its track through the disk. We'll continue to have eyes on them in case the uptick in solar flaring continues, but we are heading to Indonesia, where a 6.0 blot echo at the low velocity zone was followed just five hours later by a 7-pointer closer to the surface. Luckily, this one is still too small to have created a tsunami. First up in today's articles is a greater mapping of the magnetic fields of the local superbubble. For those who don't recall, they want to claim that this is from the star that blew long ago and seeded our sun and nearby stars. But out of the many nova that have occurred since then, why would this one remain after almost 5 billion years? There's a disconnect in their story. We've said it could be the vast X-ray bloated signature from the sun's recurrent micronova events. The sun does just coincidentally happen to be at the exact center of the bubble. Common questions we get on this include, well, why don't we see these everywhere from all the other nova events? Well, folks, remember, not all stars will nova under the conditions we discuss of the galaxy. In fact, most of the stars, which are M dwarfs or other small and magnetically powerful stars, are going to super flare instead. G-type stars like the Sun can nova under those conditions if they are singles, and there just aren't as many of those. Did you know that of the 53 closest stars, only one is a single G-type star like our Sun? We're talking a tiny number here. We also have this new paper discussing how their nova impact to Earth from other stars ideas can be pretty far off, needing to be changed considerably, and as we've seen in the journals, somewhat constantly. But nothing in that realm was as important as the magnetic dusty pinballs revelation from three years ago. The dust from these events, which carries the isotopes, cannot survive the shock wave and are imprisoned within. So how did all those other nova isotopes get to Earth? Well, they didn't. They were produced right here in our solar system by our sun's recurrent nova event. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, there are hundreds of papers backing up every aspect of the recurring disaster cycle, from the solar micronova to the past cycles of Earth to the galactic physics that trigger them and the ongoing signs it's about to happen again. The only place in the known universe to find them all together in one place is linked below in the description box, our playlist, and our books. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.